All right, so um, we came down to the, the like uh, references and stuff like that, but I just wanted to talk about algorithms and give you a few examples for it before we continue with the rest of this stuff. So I'm going to uh, show you um, how algorithms are used. Um, now, with our knowledge right now uh, and uh, the fact and, and uh, um, um, uh, learning on, on uh, how to pass uh, functions around and logic around using pointer functions, lambda expressions, funk doors, and things like that, um, uh, now we can actually use the, um, the algorithms. So a perfect example for something that, that, that I have written is here. I'm just going to write, go through this. Um, uh, is the, the font readable? We're good. Let, let me just set up the poll ready so I can ask my questions quickly. Is font size okay? All right. All right. So the font size okay. Um, uh, let's start. Um, so um, we have, I have a, an employee class created as usual with uh, a constructor, a few uh, logical operators like a sign, a comparison, a greater than, and things like that. And it has a salary and it has a print and an O stream to, to show a compound type. That's all. So the, the employee essentially, you set its salary, uh, the employee number and the name and uh, you can compare uh, using the the assignment compare the names you can compare the salaries by comparing it to a double and compare one employee with another with greater than sign and so on and so forth and we can return the salary and uh, return and display it so uh, very straightforward and easy to go through now let's take a look at the algorithms first of all to use the al algorithms are already made and uh, uh, created uh, popular logic and the common logic that we have to do to work with our data and uh, it's uh, it's used to, to do all the tasks that we need to write code for in, a, in an efficient and quick way um, so um, to use algorithms you have to include algorithm that essentially gives you all the STL algorithms that we have um, so let's start. So I have the employee. I created an array of employees over here to check and test and see how everything works. Uh, then uh, say I want to do calculation and find out uh, what are the taxes uh, that each employee have to pay, how much they how much they are owing. So I'll create a vector called taxes. The size of the vector is going to be size of the vector of the employees. And I'm going to put 0 0.13, that that's essentially the tax that each one of them has to pay. Then I'm going to create an owing thingy over here, and I want to find out how much each employee owes taxes based on the amount of tax that we have. So we have one rec one vector that holds all the employee. We have one vector holds that zero series of 0 0.13. Uh, and I have uh, uh, a vector that is empty uh, and it's supposed to hold some doubles. Are we okay down to this point? Okay, then uh, what we need to do uh, next is to be able to iterate through the employees. Therefore, I'm going to create an iterator of type uh, iterator for vector of employee, and I'm going to call it IT. And the IT is the iterator that I'm going to use for the employees. So to uh, kind of go through the employees and show them, this is what I'm doing. So essentially, uh, the program runs and gives me an error. Let me see what's going on. Uh, oh, let me remove these because oh, I have two. Uh, I have two different ones. I have to remove this one. Sorry about that. Remove, remove, remove. There you go. I had another employee over there, and they're all called employee. You can have to, you cannot have two classes with the same name. So that's that's what I was getting. So anyway, so um, let's put this one at left, and the other one, uh, the and this one at right. 
the output and write and take a look at it and hopefully everything's going to be good all right so i'll go through my uh, so these are all the employees that i created the number of employees 19 total and that's what we have and these are the taxes created and owing created so the taxes are essentially 19 of them and each one of them is 0 0.13 as you see uh, owing is the same thing but i have all zeros in there and then i create an iterator for the employee so that is going to be used for that now i'm going to go through showing all the employees instead of actually going through the employees one by one and show them with the um, uh, uh, array notation i can actually use a for each type uh, a for loop uh, and uh, say uh, uh, for each element inside that one show the element one by one and it's going to display the elements that we have let me go to the properties over here and make it a bit smaller there we go so it shows the employees one by one as you see and it goes right up to 19 and every single one of them is used and run the cursor and that's what we have so that's all the employees we have with the employee number salary and everything are we good down to this point all right now say I want to find an employee inside these employees so one way to do it is to actually write a loop and go through it one by one compare the name with the name that I have because I know I have a comparison operator over here that compares the two or I can use the find algorithm so I can actually call the find algorithm say from the beginning to the end of my vector compare it to this name and see if you can find it so finding essentially means to use the assignment the the, the comparison operator the the, uh, the 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 comparison operator between the two see if it returns it returns true or not and because i have that function over here inside employee i can use the find find algorithm in here so i'm going to say find from the beginning to the end with this name and give it to me so it essentially becomes the uh, the uh, the employee that is found between all those things so find is the first example for an algorithm that we have inside the um, the algorithm so by doing something like this if find is not equal to n so you know that e dot end essentially is an empty iterator it means it is the end if it is not the end it means the employee if it's not equal to the end it means employee is found and it actually shows it and you can because the minus operator is overloaded between iterators you can simply say it minus i begin plus one and that shows you that position 15 is the one that is found yes wilson Okay, just wondering. Um, for e dot begin and e dot end, that's a pointer to like the beginning and the end element. And no, if don't so, say a pointer. That's it, like, that's the the the, uh, the 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 iterator that points to the beginning and the iterator that points to uh the to it e dot end is always nothing. It means one after the last. Okay. Um, mind if I ask? What if I do like e dot begin and then afterwards I have an iterator for something like um in the middle of like the vector like the then middle it's gonna search like up maybe... to half of it. Okay. Okay. So that's so let's okay, say you so have works. an iterator that is pointing to Jack Marley over here. If that's the case, it starts from one and goes right before that one. Joey is the last one that is going to check. It goes right to that one and 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 it's gonna search in that one and see if it's there or not. Say, uh, go ahead, Iman. Sorry, so for the find function, what library are we using? Like, algorithm. is it? They're all oh. in algorithm. And can it be used with uh, regular arrays? Anything. Or just... That's the beauty of a uh, thing. You can use regular integer array if you want to. Okay. Put the first element and the last element in there. Okay, 
Thank you. As simple as that. So, so again, everyone, what are we doing over here? Although it is an algorithm, but it can be used on any of type types of any of these types that we have. But no one uses an array anymore. Uh, an array is a very inefficient thing. Any time that you feel you need to use an array, use a vector. Never use an array anymore. Done with arrays. Okay. So that's one. Another one. I want to go through and see if uh, uh, filter something between all these things and count and see how many of those matches the description of what I have. If I want to do something like that, count if is my friend, for example. So count if I'm saying start from the beginning to the end and for the condition of count if, I am writing a lambda, as simple as that. I'm going to say it's going to receive an employee reference, and if E is greater than 80,000, it returns true. So any of the employees who is making more than 80,000 thing, it's going to be added to the number, and it's going to count between them. So now you come over here, I'll go count if, and as you see, num is 3. It means 3 employees are making more than 80,000. Again, the number of algorithms are like uh, let me just bring this up so you see what i'm talking about it's it's gonna be extremely boring if i want to if i actually sit over here and go through uh go through uh we don't need this one go through all these things one by one so let me just bring the weekly schedule i think we have the list in here algorithms Standard by written thing. Algorithms. There you go. If I go to algorithms, just take a look at the list that you have in here. Does it list it over here? I think there's some someplace it lists it. Um, algorithms. So there you go. Input iterator. Uh, let me just come over here. There you go. All of, any of, none of, for each, find, uh, find if not, count, count if, then and and he, and it keeps going and going there are so many things over there that um for me it's, it, it's just sitting and explain to you one by one what it does it's going to be it's a boring thing i'm just going to give you a few examples of how to use them and it's you and the algorithms that you want to choose um believe me for whatever you want to do there is an algorithm that you can actually find yes iman so when we define an iterator what exactly does that iterator like what is the iter iterator type you know what i mean like is iterator, it a point it's iterator is an object of its own inner iterator uh, replaces a pointer so it's a pointer is a, is uh, is a pointer that points to an element of a container and it can again it can be array or anything right yeah so if you say if you say target of it it becomes it's value. overloaded to show the content of what iterator is. Okay, if so. you see IT++, it moves to the next one. Okay, got it. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so that's that. Uh, and so because every single thing that you need to do uh, inside a container may require basic uh, arithmetic calculations. Another thing that we have, I don't think we need the YouTube thingy now. Another thing that we need to understand is that the operations you want to do, like for example, you want to add something to, to something. All these things are changed to functors, which means they, they you have uh, um, uh, functors created for basic operations just to take a look at this um, forget about the bitwise but divides divides essentially is division if you want to uh, i want you to appreciate what i'm what i'm going to say right now we we learned the functors understood what functors are because because we wanted to pass specific logic to uh uh, somewhere and make our algorithm, our program, use different logics based on different situations. So we could pass logics 
to it and that's why we created functors and then we create so what happens is that these are all as you see are templated uh, functors created that you can pass them around well, we call this operator class template so if you want to divide two things you pass a divide object to it if you want to check to see if two things are equal you send an equal to so essentially they put name for all the common operators that you have so you can actually pass it which brings me to this example Where is my, oh, that's not, mm, let me just close it. There you go. So <clears throat> transform, transform changes a, conta uh, a container. You can change certain con uh, values of the containers. So you can say, uh, I want you to go through all the elements of this vector from beginning to the end, have this vector multiplied by, have this, ve this vector multiplied by the elements of the, uh, of the vectors from the beginning to the end that I have and put it in Oink. So essentially you're saying go through all the elements of the array, take these things, multiply the values, and put it in here. Uh, let me see, somebody asked something, and I need to see who it is, and I have to open my big blue button. Where is big blue button? Big blue button. You say, yes, Wilson. Okay, so just to make sure, um, Okay, so for taxes dot begin, um, I, let's say I put like maybe tap the iterator of uh of maybe like um the second or third value of taxes, then that means it'll be that iterator that multiplies from beginning to end, right? Yes, but uh, if you recall, I put equal values in there, so all my taxes are the same. It's just I just okay. wanted uh, I, I just wanted to have a vector to the size of the same thing, so one by one it's it's multiplied. That's how transform works. Transform gets a range, and gets the beginning of one vector and beginning in another vector. When I say vector, it could be vector, it could be Q, whatever it is, another container. So it starts from the beginning to the end, and then starts from the beginning of this one. One by one performs the action you specify over there to the values in here and saves it in the third argument. That's what transform does. So in, you could have written a loop for this, but instead of a loop, you're actually doing it this way. You're saying transform. And transform, the difference is that the logic of transform is better than a loop. And later on, when we learn multi-threading, you're going to see that you can actually ask it to do it in several threads, which means the action is going to happen in a parallel way, so it's going to be about tens of times faster than a regular loop. So all the things that you see that is written in this algorithm, all those, many of them, look very simple. Remember that all these things, uh, uh, multitasking, multi-threading can be applied to them to actually do the job for you faster mm. so if i do transform now by by executing transform you will see that where is my output you will see that again this is another algorithm so instead of a loop i'm saying for each start so for each essentially loop through this uh, range and apply this function to every single element so the values that are here are going to be passed to this lambda and because it's a double value it's going to receive the double values and with the precision it's going to print them one by one so with this for each i'm going to see every single thing that i have let me just i can go to a new line over here um let me just go run right to here So as you see, these are all the values that 
these people are owing based on 13 percent tax that they want to pay so it's going to go through them one by one and for each it's just the loop so you can use an algorithm instead of a regular loop and I know Iman's going to ask the question can I use a regular array over here yes you can okay uh, uh, are we okay down to this point again you have to go uh. and play with these things it's not something that you can you you uh, you just see and see that's ex you have to go and start writing code for yourself to understand wilson did you want to say something yep um okay so the fifth argument for transform can i use like a lambda function or any function and oh, then yeah. Afterwards, like, oh yeah as long as it it uh it, it deals with these two okay again and for the all lambda these or the things are just functions no difference yes someone else had a question and for oh okay Okay, actually, uh, yeah. go ahead. Now, you will finish, and then we're going to talk with Iman. Yeah. Go ahead. For the function, for the fifth um argument for the function uh, for transform, um, I'll have to use two arguments, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, just give me one minute. But when I'm using a func, when I'm using like the one of those uh functors that you just showed us um i don't actually have to put the arguments in the thing i just have to like do multiplies um and then afterwards in the pacman symbols the type and then afterwards like the calling operator right true you're passing okay. the functor to it because it's essentially this is what it is right if you look at it but because it's actually putting over here like this it is actually passing an instance of double of it so it cre it's instantiating it and sending it inside the same thing as this lambda over here so in here i'm going for each start from the beginning to the end and i'm saying apply the values and i'm putting a double value over here so this lambda is going to receive that one or let's do sorting i want to sort between the two i'm going to say that's begin that's end and i want to uh, uh, sort these two. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to say this is my comparison function. At left side, I receive an employee. At right side, I receive an employee. And my return value is going to be A greater than B. So it's going to apply this function between the two and sort it. We could have used uh, 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 a greater than, uh, uh, what call it? Uh, a greater than operator class instead. Because they are double values, that is going to work too. If uh, if I had the operator uh, uh, overloaded for it, but anyways, so yeah. So as I was saying, now I'm I'm gonna uh, Iman, you were saying something. So for the employee objects, do you have like an operator overloaded so that it casts? Yes, exactly. It, it must have the number? operator, otherwise it won't work. Okay. So there is no and magic like... happens. It means employee must facilitate that action. Okay, so it, it yeah. casts it to the, I don't know, it's salary or anything, right? If I wanted the salary, then I had to over here return a dot salary is greater, so it's got to be sorted based on salary. No, so but I like have to when, my you're saying, when you're saying a greater than b, what yes, is a greater what... than b is implemented over here? You see that? Oh, so when you, you see with two employees? Uh, yes. So it actually, so when I go through it, you will, let's, let's actually try something in here. So, um, the, uh, casting to double will cast to salary. You see this? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, now let me do them. something. Now I'm going to show you something. Okay. So let's start with this. So I'm at sort. I am sorting the employees from beginning to the end with a Lambda that comp compares two employees. Therefore it's going to be sorted by their name. And if I show them one by one, you will see that they are they are sorted by their name. You see that? Yeah. In reverse order, obviously. Okay. Now take a look. In here, I'm going to have another sort. I don't want to finish it because I want to show them both. 
but instead of that one I'm going to say double and double because that double is facilitated it, it, it after this is all done when it comes to this let's see, let it recompile I hope it actually works all right so now these are sorted in descending order on based on their name but this lambda now returns true or false based on the salary therefore when this is called and I pass through it uh, run to cursor you will see now everything is art actually whoa <laughs> um, sorry I uh, I should have reset uh, uh, I but I didn't um, yeah but as you see over here it is sorted now by salary in reverse order you see that so yeah so like if you if like let's say you have an object of employee class like named John and if you do like John multiply by two, does that John cast get cast to double? Yes. Okay. Because so, that's what you. I designed in my class. Thanks. And so on. So essentially this these this is how you use algorithms. Anything that you want to do, there is something in there for you to uh, to use. And if you if you just want to compare using uh, regular uh, um, uh, arithmetical operations you can use it using operator class templates to compare two elements of, uh, of a container if you want to do something specifically done write lambda functor whatever you want any functionality but again go through the uh, list of things that can be done in the uh, in the uh, algorithms they it, it's limitless it's like there are so many things you can do believe me anything you want to do you can find an answer for it um, and that's algorithms essentially um, I don't want to um, there is nothing else to talk about it's just uh, um, letting you know that these uh, uh, templates are created for you these algorithms are created for you to do um, all the little things you want to do in uh, C++ that you don't have time to write anything in, to, to, to implement. Uh, uh, any questions? Now, just to show you how far these algorithms can go, let me just show demonstrate something interesting. So in here I'm going to say a I will go reference demo dot cpu. So now I'm gonna bring back those. Yes, uh, Watsal, go ahead. You had a question, Jonathan. You had a question. I don't know if you just clicked yes just for the heck of it, or you have a question. Uh, please start speaking or type. Oh, misclicked. Okay, uh, Vastal was uh, and Jonathan. No reply. All right. So uh, let me do this now. I'm gonna add, bring that employee, the binary employee that I had. Uh, add existing items. Add existing items. The binary employee that we had we already know this employee that reads and writes in a binary thing it's not the one with dynamic stuff it's just a regular binary uh, uh, thing that we had and where is it okay that's the and let me just Take these out. So let's start from. So I'm gonna include include uh, what do I need. I'm gonna include IO stream. I want to include uh, F stream because I want to read from the file. Uh, I'm gonna include vectors. Vectors. 
and I'm going to include algorithms. Include algorithms. And finally, I'm going to include the uh, B employee that I have. And uh, using namespace std. So, <coughs> so let's say I want to open up the file, read all the employees that I have from the file. So let's do that in a second. But I'm going to do it using iterators, not using uh, the regular going through things and checking to see if it hits the end and things like that. So uh, what I'm going to do is this. I'm, um, let's just have some uh, variable uh, that I can count stuff with later on. So what I'm going to do over here is this. I'm going to say if stream file and this file is going to open employee.bin employee.bin the file that I created last time in class. It has all these uh, employees saved in binary. So I'm going to say iOS binary. Then uh, I'm going to create an iStream iterator, an iStream iterator for the class employee. And let's call it iStream, uh, um, iStream iterator. And I'm going to attach that one to the file. So essentially, I'm saying this iStream iterator of mine belongs to this file. So this essentially, this iterator will point to the first record in the file if it can be read properly. And then I'm going to create another iStream iterator for the employee. But that's going to be pointed, and I'm going to call it end of, of, end of file is take, end of, uh, uh, and end of uh, the stream and I'm just going to make it empty so it means this is the end it, it's an iOS that can't point to anything it cannot it, it is uh, an empty iterator then I'm going to create a vector I'm going to say create a vector of employee for me let's call it EMP and I'm going to say the beginning of it is ii, that begins, and end of it is when it cannot read anymore. So doing so will read everything from my file and put it right in the employee. So my EMP over here will have all the records in the file just by these using the iterators. And now I can actually go through them. I can actually say for uh, auto... auto say uh, uh, EMP uh, oh, I already have EMP uh, of E um, in EMP and I'm gonna say C out uh, uh, let's set uh, let's set that one to one I'm gonna say I plus plus and um, I'll put a dot in front of it and then show the employee. So if I just do this, you will see that magically all the employees are going to be displayed on a screen. See? So it essentially, we're using an iterator, I'm going through all the files. Now that I have everything in a vector, sort can, uh, sorting of the files is just a second. I simply can say sort uh, EMP begin EMP and from the beginning to the end and uh, uh, let's draw a line and now uh, I'll set I again to 1 and I'm going to write the exact same loop and voila there you go. Now I have everything sorted in ascending order. Ta-da! So you see, imagine if you wanted to write this using OOP244 knowledge. How long would it have taken? But using uh, the algorithms, uh, it's written in three seconds. Yes, Wilson.
so if I so for the sort if I don't use like a um if I don't use less than the, a third argument um it basically organizes by like alphabetical order or numerical no, order no, right no 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 it <laughs> look at this. Operator. Because I have that. If I didn't have that one, it wouldn't have worked. Okay. Because it uses less that than operator to go between the two and compares them. So these things you need to okay, find wait, wait, wait. out about algorithms. So essentially, this is what I'm doing. Uh, literally, a, a string compare. Okay, so if you do sort on a on a class and it has its own and like it has its own like um operator less than or equal to then like then you don't actually have to have to add like the third argument it'll no, be no, able you don't to have to but if you want to change it you can add so the fourth the third one's going to come in and if this one for example was this return return uh where is do I, do I have salary yeah salary being less than right operand salary now if i run the program it's not based on the thing anymore uh on first name anymore now it's actually based on salaries okay so it's because like the class has that operator exactly. overloaded See, that, that i don't need that i don't need to actually add the third argument it'll just use that automatically yeah let's let's use all the things that i thought before in templates here don't forget these are all templates so when you are actually do passing an employee vector in there, what happens is that it says this type, I want to compare it with another type. The types must support. Your job is to find out what operator sort needs to be able to perform this action. Okay? And if it doesn't have it, provide it. As simple as that. Okay, all right, so any questions down to this point? Can I ask a question? Of course you can. That's why I said any questions. Okay, so <laughs> when you, when you, when we wanted to read like from a binary file, we, we passed in the, like the size of the thing that we're reading, right? But in here, we're not passing it. Is it is it being automatically it passed? It does it automatically. Even... Everything's done automatically. It what it does over here, it reads. Okay, let's come to binary thingy. What did I do over here? I have overloaded everything to be read properly from the file. So yeah. So because the thing is that uh, because the file is binary and it's reading it from the file, and my employee is set to dump itself into the thing as a binary thing that that's why it reads it yeah um can i just see the operator overload for reading the file oh i don't have it oh you so like it's reading it it's binary read there is no need for it no like what i'm what i'm asking is like if we didn't have the iterator of the type employee it couldn't have done it right because it doesn't know how how much is the size. My read does this. Yeah. You see that? Oh. So it tells it how to read it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. got it. Thanks. Got it? Yeah, thanks. All right. All right, so that's that. Even with an algorithm, you can do the read yourself. So you can do a for each and have a lambda expression over the read that employee. So it's gotta be applied to every single vector. And you're done. Uh, professor? Yes. Um, I wanna ask, a, when you did this for a binary file, can we just do this for a regular text file instead of just a vector for the employees? You just have a vector of strings? Yeah, yeah, strings. yeah, you can do that, yeah, sure. And, oh yeah, you can, yeah, yeah, you that's can all. Do, you can do anything you want. Anything. Yeah, no, I don't know. I just like, if you just wanna instantly just get every single line and then just put it through. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And if it fails, it's gonna stop halfway through and your vector is gonna be smaller. Okay. All right. 
Okay, so that's that. Uh, what else we need to talk about? We don't need that anymore. Let me see what is where is where are my cheat sheet? No, we are not talking about that today. How about okay? All right, so the next thing we want to talk about would be put this one up here. are these so we're going to do a couple of things that if you were my student before you have seen it 50 times if you were not now you are seeing it for the first time so um, let's go through it and see what we are talking about um, after going through these two we're going to take a break and we come back and we're going to talk about pointers and hopefully finish smart pointers uh, before we continue, I'm letting you know that you're going to be doing an uh, online quiz until we get. So I'm going to give you another, release another online quiz coming up, and it, it's done as usual. You know what the uh, routine is. Uh, I'll open it up for 48 hours. Please do it. Um, so, memory of your computer is a series of bytes starting from address zero going up to the money in your pocket um, the more you have uh, the more RAM you have the bigger the, the higher the memory number is going to go um, and um, it's uh, kind of a virtual thing actually which means it goes up to the end of the RAM and then uh, if you, you exceed that some operating system starts caching your hard drive for it but anyways but nevertheless that's what it is and at any moment when you create a variable inside the thing we know that the variable sits at a piece of memory and it has an address so my int variable has the address 108 if you create a double variable that double variable has 132 in it and therefore 132 is the address of the double variable are we good down to this point <laughs> All right, so if you put something to a va into a variable, it essentially fills the whole size of the type of the variable that you have with the binary representation of the value that you are putting. So I put uh, an integer value, it's going to cover all the four bytes over there, or now eight bytes because we have a 64 bit, and the double the values that you have over there, and it's going to cover everything for it. Now, let's go back to variables that we had. Pointers are nothing but variables, which means we could create a pointer like this, say pointer PTR, and that creates a pointer. Um, and the pointer that we create, uh, it uh, can hold a variable, let's say 102. So if I put 102 inside my pointer over here, essentially I mean I want to uh, point to address 102. Obviously, I don't have anything in 102, therefore this is going to be garbage. That's why we have uh, we have to correct it to the size, to, the, to where the variable is, to, so put 108 so it actually points to where I actually have something. Do we understand this? <laughs> The problem is that you never know actually where your variable is sitting at. Because of that, we need to have something to extract the address of a variable instead of hard coding it. So I can say pointer is equal to address of var, and because of that fact, the target of PTR will be and 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 then I have another another thing to go target of PTR, so I can actually use the address to put something inside a variable. So I have a pointer PTR, I have an address of var, and I have a target of which goes through 
all these good stuff and therefore I can access my memories and sorry if I'm going back to C because this is what I teach pointers in C you're gonna see a printf over here showing percent e with var that is going to have an output of two three four five are we okay with this all right the next thing we need to know over here is if I print target of PTR the output is exactly the same thing and if I print PTR itself it's not gonna print the target but it's gonna actually print the address in which the target is sitting at so if I do var that's the variable itself if I go target of pointer that points to var that's the variable itself if I print the tar PTR then the variable PTR that happens to be a pointer will be printed which is the address of the uh, variable that we have are we good with this now the thing is that although we are good with this but again we are using assumptions for this so what I'm if what I'm saying is true I should be able to have a pointer my pointer to be address of the var and then I want to set the pointer to the value that I have but the thing is that how does the pointer know if the thing that is sitting at the target is an integer or a double it has no way of knowing so when I actually want to put the target of PTR the double value how does it know that it has to cover 8 instead of 4 this is a flaw in our design we can't do that because we can't do that I cannot just say into I cannot just say pointer PTR I have to tell the compiler what this pointer is pointing to so pointer PTR should be integer pointer PTR now my pointer knows that it's pointing to a variable of type integer and when I'm writing into it it's gonna use the four point four four points four po uh, four uh, uh, bytes to put the things in and everything goes nice and if I want to have a double pointer all I need to do is to have a double pointer DPTR now another pointer DPTR that I have its job is to point to a double pointer therefore when I put the address of the var and I set some value into it it knows the target is double and it's gonna put 8 in there and therefore everything's gonna be fine and dandy are we okay with this because C language was a language uh, written by people who didn't like to type much they said this syntax that I have written is too much to do instead of actually writing pointer what I'm gonna do over here is to write asterisk so pointers representation in C is asterisk therefore integer pointer double pointer is what we do are we okay with this all right so yeah and the next thing we need to actually uh, change over here is address of address of again was a big thing to write therefore you put it with an to replace it with an ampersand so any place you have address of you put ampersand so it's going to be essentially dptr is address of dvar and therefore everything else will fall in place the problem comes when we talk about target of they sadly put the same thing I would put a like if it was me designing the language instead of what comes next which is target of is presented by asterisk I put a I should have I, I I would have used at sign over here that makes more sense but they used asterisk so when the asterisk comes before the type before the pointer it actually means target of but the result is exactly the same so target of and pointer are both presented by asterisk if asterisk comes after a type together it means pointer which means integer pointer PTR or double pointer DPTR or struct employee pointer EPTR sorry because it was C I have a struct otherwise we don't need that if asterisk comes after uh, in front of a variable 
if asterisk comes in front of a variable as a unary operator it means target of like a is set to target of p or target of t is equal to x or a is equal to b multiplied by target of c or e is equal to target of m multiplied by c multiplied by c so from what we have we can recognize which one is a pointer so the the fact that the asterisk over here target of t comes we know that t must be a pointer we know here c must be pointer and we know here m must be pointer and that's how pointers are created in c language are we okay with this sorry for this review but we need to know this i know many of you gotta say oh i already know all these things i know you do but it's a good idea to actually uh talk about it and know the next thing we need to know is the rel relation between arrays and pointers when you deal with an array what you have so we have an integer if you have a regular variable you just put one integer integer va and you have one thing and you have a pointer and you point to it that's beautiful there's nothing wrong with it and everything works perfectly with it you can actually set stuff into it and everything is fine and dandy but when you create an array of integers what happens is that it's a combo so when you say integer a of five it actually puts five integers for you but back to back in memory but the problem over here is uh, actually this illustration is wrong because i missed the byte over here so it's 124 this is supposed to be like over here we, we need to have a 24 that i didn't put it uh, so uh, it should end at 128 it, this is wrong but my apologies anyway so if i say ar3 is equal to 2345 it actually sets that one but behind the scene and if i say ar5 uh, uh but, 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 but behind the scene but behind the scene what happens is that when you actually create a, a, an array it not only creates these five things but it has a pointer somewhere called ar whose job is to point to an integer and because of this thing being an array that ar points to the beginning of the array so although it's 108 but because it's an array there are more to come there is no difference between an array's name and a pointer in c or c plus plus language they are identical beings there is absolutely no difference between the two you can use it interchangeably so if i say target of ar is two three four five essentially the first one is going to be set or if i say ar2 it's the exact same thing absolutely no difference and because of this fact i can actually use another notation to show uh, to access the values of an array so instead of saying target uh, ar2 i can use this points pointer representation which is essentially saying from ar go two integers further show me what the target is and the result is going to be identical to that one are we okay with this and this ladies and gentlemen brings us to pointer arithmetic to understand how pointers are being actually used and uh, how we can actually uh, uh, work with them using C++. So, now we're going to have a break, we're going to go and come back and then we're going to talk about pointers. Um, that's it. Uh, five, ten minutes, and we'll be back. Please remind me to continue recording when we come back. I'm going to quickly go through pointer arithmetic and understand what it is. So careful with pointers. Because of what we mentioned, um, we could, like, instead of creating... Uh, something like this instead of creating something like this um, like you can say over here uh, character name 
and I can put uh, I can do something like that we can actually write something like this uh, So this will work and has absolutely no problem um, because essentially what you see at top is the equivalent of what we have at, at the bottom. But what you need to be careful about, and all these things work perfectly, you can uh, use them um, to do whatever you want to do. Um, and all the things we mentioned about pointers apply to both of these things, which means, uh, <coughs> say, um, um if I say over here C out uh, name we know that what's printed over here is gonna be F because it points to the beginning of the function. Let me just uh, make this a tiny bit bigger. Oh actually let's do it bold. I think like that it's gonna be yeah there you go that's visible now. Okay, so I can do something like this, and if I if I use uh, pointer notation instead of array, I can go see out something like uh, name plus two. That essentially means that essentially means uh, go to uh, uh, skip two elements and then print whatever you have which essentially is going to be the third element because I'm printing it. It's exactly right. You are writing the, uh, it's exactly like you are um, uh, using the index. Absolutely no difference. <coughs> and um, yeah, so the uh, problem over here uh, is this. Um, when you, um, create something like this when you actually do something like this over here this creates an array of 30 characters and puts Fred into it which means you have 28 mo 26 more to go to or 25 more to go over here and when you do something like this it actually matches the size of this one that is 5 and you're gonna have 5 characters created over here and Fred will be copied into it. The problem with what you have in here is that P is just a pointer. It's not an array and it is pointing to this literal value. Changing the values of literal, changing the uh, contents of literal values uh, sometimes is not allowed in different languages, in different compilers. If we did it uh, um, I don't know, 10-15 uh, years ago, it would have allowed us to do it, but again, it's not a good thing. It's not good to actually write something like 1, 2, 3, oh, sorry, uh, X over here. It is not, um, because the X that we have over here, as you see, it says it is uh, an unmodifiable value, but in here, I can do name X it will work if I remove this one out I get a warning if it was an old compiler you wouldn't have gotten a warning and it would work just fine so uh, if the compiler allows you to do so don't do it okay um, make sure you understand that when you are using a pointer pointing to a literal value although it is right and okay to do so but you should treat that pointer as a literal values pointer, which means you should not change it and you should only use it for read-only purposes. Are we okay with this?
Next thing we need to understand is point arithmetic, which means what happens if I say integer a 10 set to When I do something like this, a points to 10 integers, and when I say integer pointer p is set to a, obviously p will point to the same thing, which means if I go c out over here, c out over here, target of p, it will print 100, for, uh, it will print 10 with no questions asked. And if I do something like this, p is set to address of a3 and if I print the exact same thing obviously I'm going to have 40 printed over there and we have no problem with this. Are we okay down to this point? More understanding is required to see what this means. If I go over here p2 and print it as this. Now, it's not, it's, the compiler has no way to know that P is not beginning from the beginning of A. For all, con con the compiler knows that P is an array that starts from here. So if I go P2, 60 is exactly what I need. Is it 60? Yeah, 60 is what it deals with. So essentially starts from P and goes too further. Are we okay with this? My point in here, things that I the point that I want to make is this. If I go P is A and I'm gonna go C out and I'm gonna go unsigned and I'm gonna print the value of P, this will display exactly where the array is. So that's the address in which the array, my integer array is sitting. Are we okay with that? And obviously if P is set to A1, address of A1 instead of that, then the unsigned P that is displayed over here will be depending on what is the size of my compiler either four or eight bytes further okay so I think reinterpret cast is the one that I need to have for this unsigned Funny thing is, it's still giving me an a uh, uh, from int pointer to. Hmm, I thought it's gonna. Uh, is it re? I, th I think it's reinterpret cast. It's not static cast. But anyways, let me see if I go static cast. I don't think it's gonna allow me. Yeah, it won't allow me. So reinterpret it is. The well, funny thing is that still is giving me an, uh, a warning. Anyways, so my point over here is that the address is four further, which brings me to this. If I go P++ over here, we know for a fact that one will not be added to P, but four will be added, which means if I actually show it again, we will see that it's going to go to the next address, which is 60. So please be aware of it. Pointers are not regular integers, although they are unsigned integers, but adding one unit to them is adding the size of the target. Do we understand this? All right. 
so essentially when you do plus plus what is added over here is the next possible place for next for uh, next possible place for the uh, type P is pointing to for the target of P in this case an integer so if we had something over here like this if I had struck uh, double um, V and I had over here say 5 if I have something like this and let's call it over here doubles okay if I created a pointer of type doubles if I say let me just make it capitalize I'm uncomfortable with that so if I created over here doubles P uh, pointer DP set to um, set to uh, let's have an array of doubles over here so I'll go doubles d3 that's good enough so if I set it like this if I actually uh, display that value over here that is dp the address would be whatever and if I add one to that pointer if I go DP plus plus we will see that the target will be added to it which is essentially the size of what we have so this is five six seven this is six sixteen so essentially um, 40 uh, uh, bytes will be added to it because five doubles is 540 are we okay with this that's pointer arithmetic and that's that having said that please appreciate the fact that when you write a literal value of any kind those literal values are literally addresses of places that things are sitting so if I go over here something like see out target of hello what is the output of the following program ladies and gentlemen one person replied everybody's thinking okay let me do it again three people replied two right one wrong if I have Kara const character pointer P set to hello and I print over here target of P what is the output of the following program come on come on you can answer go 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 Okay, one person said hello. No, it's not hello. It's a single character. Target of P is a single character. It's not an array. That person needs to do a review on pointers. And the rest of you are all writing H, which is perfectly correct. So, if I am doing that, didn't I say that P is the same thing as hello? So, when you put this one over here, it is absolutely no difference. If I write over here, a B C D and I print it what's gonna be printed over here is a the first so this is the address of the literal that's why you are putting it in P so you are saying the variable P is equal to hello if target of P is H then target of A B C D is a yes Wilson 
Wait, if that's the case, when you do asterisk C out, uh, arrow notation, arrow notation, and then afterwards asterisk, asterisk, and then afterwards the string hello, wouldn't H be printed and not like the address of H um, time, of hello? <laughs> you, you, the things you say. One more time, when you say C out, tell me what? Uh, asterisk symbol, hello, um, you know, like uh, asterisk symbol, uh, qu double quotes, in, in the double quotes, hello, wouldn't be wouldn't it be H that gets printed out? Not, yes, of course. Like, um, H I, will be printed. What you said, like, what you said, like, two people got it right and one person got it wrong when on the polling questions. Yeah, well, I didn't mention who said who. Okay, so the person oh. who got it wrong actually wrote address of hello, which is wrong. Address Wait, of hello two... will not get printed. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. See, see, see. Never mind. <laughs> Okay, the other two people said H. Yeah, I thought it was I thought yeah I thought you meant I thought no, number one was wrong. So like first people who wrote H and then number two oh, was no, 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 okay. No, 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 yeah, no, no. this is perfectly good. Sorry, sorry, so, just like the so, counts. Yeah, so if I do something like this, then obviously C is gonna get printed. Okay, so let's appreciate this and understand that every literal value that you write with strings are essentially a piece of memory and the address is returned. Are we okay with this? All right. <laughs> All right, let me go back to yes, true, false. People actually typed yes. Thank you very much for doing so. So, Professor. Yes. When we uh, add notations like plus two to the string, mm -hmm. would it give us back, if you had A, B, C, D, would it give us back C? I'm just trying to refresh my memory. Yes, yes, yes. It's got to be C. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank right. you. No problem. So, what I wanted to say was this now. So, let's say I have something like this uh, character point, no. Character name is Homer. No, 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 no. Character name 20 is Homer. Now I'm going to say character P is set to name. <coughs> now, I want to... I'm, I'm doing C, not C++. If I, if I say P++, that's gonna print. So if I actually go, actually, but what does, what is this is gonna, what is this going to print? By the way, um, what is the output of this program, people? Oh, what happened? What happened? Wait, oop. One more time. A typed response. One more time. Sorry. Go ahead. What is the output of this program? So 71% 70, of you did it wrong, and only two people did it right. This is what the output, take a look. It's Omer, not O. If it was target of P, then O would have printed. So people, you have to work on your, on your uh, uh, pointer skills for heaven's sake. The first one prints O, the second one prints Omer, because it's a string. Are we okay with this? All right. Now, what I wanted to say is this. What if I wanted to advance this pointer by one in a function? What if I wanted to write a function over here to advance one so P will be added by one? How can I do that? If I have something like this, integer A is 20, okay? If I want to add one to that one, I'm going to write over here add one, and I'm going to write integer pointer uh, a pointer and then in here I'm gonna say target of target of P is a plus plus that's gonna add one to it in target of AP plus plus 
and now in here I can say C out A and I can say C out address of uh, sorry uh, and I'm gonna say add one and I'm gonna say over here address of A and now if I say A and L obviously what's gonna get printed over here will be 21 are we are okay with this <laughs> All right. So what if I want to do this? What if I want to add one to the value of P using the address of P? If I want to do that, what's going to be the format over here? The answer is when I had integer a, I put an asterisk, I made it integer pointer ap. Now in here, I have a character pointer, p. If I want the address of p is to go up, I have to write address character pointer. So let's call it uh, p pointer. And here, I have to add, uh, so this is essentially the type, so type pointer pp now the thing is that the thing is that the type itself is character pointer because of that to actually do it i have to write over here character pointer pointer pp so what happens is that this means this is the address of a character address this is a pointer of a character pointer and therefore if I go target of P pointer plus plus it actually adds one to the P and therefore P is gonna point to the next one that is M do we understand this half of you are standing over there watching I don't know if you are really understand or not, but I'm going to just stop the poll. Okay. To make it even funner, what if I want to actually have, so instead of doing this, what if I want to add that one in a function? Go add one and pass the address of PP over here. How can I do that? That's easy. You write void add one, and in here you have to say type pointer, 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 PP, PP, let's call it, and target of p p p plus one sorry plus plus so what is the type type is a character pointer pointer therefore this is gonna be a character pointer 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 p p p therefore now again still it will work and it will go to the next one. Oh, why well, it didn't go did i add it it should have gone d d d d an O. Wait, 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 wait. So, oh. It's not address of PP. PP is, sorry, my apologies. I made a mistake. A PP add one. It's not address of PP, it is... No, I'm not going to do that. It's going to confuse the heck out of everyone. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. How do I explain that? Let's take it off and I'm going to write a better example for it. So, uh, how do I write it so it could be better? Mm. Let's keep it like this. I'll do that one in person in class. So let's just go like this. 
and do add one PP and have it like that and I'm gonna explain um, that one for the rest what's what happened why is it not working uh, oh it's because you're having it calling the function that you deleted did I you're calling it itself over and over and over again oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Let's remove that one. Yeah. What am I doing here? You got to take away the comment on the first line inside uh, add one because you keep calling add yes, one. Yes, yes, but there's yes, nothing yes, yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. There we go. All right. Anyway, so we'll talk about the. Uh, uh, I want to write the third, but I don't want to, mm, should I? Uh, yeah, that's, nah, that's gotta be, nah. So let's, let's go down to pointer to pointer. Then we're going to go to pointer to pointer to pointer. I'll, I'll bring another example for you. Let's say that like this. So I'm going to see the E, I'm going to go pointer to pointer. Let's keep that one and I'm going to go to next one. How much time do we have? We have three minutes. So uh, the pointers are done. Uh, I don't need anything else as needed. Yeah, I don't think anything else is needed. Let's uh, be done down to this point. So the next day you are coming in, we are uh, on um, in the uh, in the lab. I'm gonna do the smart pointers. That's gonna take around half an hour, and then we'll start with multi-threading. So um, I'm gonna open up um, what you may call it uh, uh, um, a quiz and. Uh, um, set, uh, uh, give you time, 48 hours to do it. Um, and then when we go to this, we, we do the smart pointers and the uh, multi-threading, starting of multi-threading, then we're going to be uh, on schedule and hopefully the quizzes are going to back, come back in lab. We'll see what we can do. I'll do my best to bring, bring us back in. Uh, any questions now to this point? Omar. I just want to know the exact date. When are you going to release the uh, the quiz? Just so we don't miss it, because again, it's only forty eight hours, and we might not check it well, only during 40... that time. <laughs> well, if okay. you're, you're working on only multiple days, only forty eight hours on... for a five minutes break. Five minutes. Okay. Uh, so... hey, I'm just kidding. People might forget, and they'll okay. be looking at something else. Okay. And, so, you know. um, say um, either tonight or tomorrow night. So check uh, if you even check tomorrow, you're gonna have either 48 hours or 24 hours to do it all right it depends okay, because perfect. the op244 tests uh, uh let me just stop the recording